Let us stand together. The funeral service in the Lutheran Church is a service of participation. Uh, you'll need your bulletin and the red hymnal, which is located close to where you're sitting. Uh, the hymns are all in the uh, back part of the red hymnal. These are hymns that were favorites of Martha and were chosen by the family for this worship service. So we hope you'll participate in the singing of the hymns and the liturgy of this Lutheran service. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation, who comforts us in all our sorrows so that we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. Thanks be to God. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Our opening hymn for this afternoon's service is hymn number 660. Hymn number 660, Lift High the Cross. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our sister Martha. We thank you for giving her to us to know and to love as a companion 
in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Illumine our lives so we may see in death the gate to eternal life, that we may continue our course on earth in confidence until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before us. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we prepare for the readings of the lessons and one of our reflections from a family member. A reading from Ecclesiastes 3. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. Here ends the reading. Hi, everybody. It's such a nice day today. today. Um, Martha, or what I call mom, uh, I met the first time uh, Sarah brought me to the house. I do remember that. Uh, we were out in the camper, and I knew from day one that I was our family. Um, she it was just like my mother in a lot of ways. Um, speaking about calling her mom, uh, I do remember the time that we all sat down in the Wendy's um, in Kannapolis, uh, where the Culver's is, across from the Culver's. And uh, I always was taught uh, when I was growing up, <laughs> never call your um, people that are older than you by their first name. And I told mom, I was like, can I call you mom and dad? <laughs> and uh, they go, sure, absolutely. Um, but mom was definitely a family person. Of course, as you all know, that she was married to uh, Gary for almost 50 years. And also the uh, mom of Sarah and Justin and the grandmother of Braden. She loved her church, that is for sure. And there's one thing I do remember when we got married, me and Sarah, that um, we, uh, she came up right here where I'm standing and she was talking about Ruth Graham. And uh, I do have a poem that I wanna share, excuse me. <laughs> the age of technology. <clears throat> and when I die, I hope my soul ascends slowly so that I may watch the earth we're seeing out of sight in barrenness growing smaller as I rise, savoring recession 
with delight. Anticipating joy is so a joy. And joy unspeakable and full of glory needs more than in the twinkling of an eye, more than in a moment. Lord, who am I to disagree? It's only we have much to leave behind, so much. Before these moments of transition, what will make for me be in time to adore? By Ruth Bell Graham, number one, uh, collected poems of 162. I think that really sums up. I really do. And I think that's why mom liked Ruth Graham so much. Um, we will all miss mom, but she will always be with us and uh, looking down on us. And until we meet again, mom, I love you. And we all do too. A reading from the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Here ends the reading. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The gospel reading for this afternoon is written in the 14th chapter of St. John. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Here ends the reading of the gospel. Our hymn is Born in Cry. Please remain standing, hymn number 732, I was there to hear your morning cry. Thank you.
Be seated. I first met Martha Yunt 36 years ago, right after I arrived here at Kimball Memorial as the associate pastor, when she asked to come by my office for a conversation. She was working for an organization that was then known as Aid Association for Lutherans. It was a financial company that worked with savings accounts and investments and the like. And it quickly became apparent that Martha wanted to talk with me about retirement. I was 26 years old had flowing black brown hair, a firm washboard stomach. Okay, that's not true. <laughs> but I did have pretty good hair. I was in my very first call with a new wife and the opportunity to preach and teach and lead worship for the first time, and I was on a budget. So retirement and growing older and thinking about investing money then was about the last thing on my mind. And I remember that I told Martha that rather forcefully. And she sat there and listened to me with a curious little smile on her face. And when I finished my spiel, she pulled her chair right up beside me and she said let me tell you something you're going to turn around good and 30 years will have passed it will be here before you know it and you have a responsibility to yourself and to your family to be safe and sound and secure don't you think that's important? And before I knew what had happened, I signed on the dotted line. <laughs> and now 36 years have passed. My stomach is still a washboard, of course, but my hair is mostly gone. And what's left is gray. And I am so glad that I listened to Martha. And I'm sure that many others are as well. Here in my 60s, she has helped to give me a peace of mind for myself and for my family. And that was a real ministry. That was Martha to a T. She was an encourager, a listener, a supporter, but she had some very definite ideas about the way things should be done and about the way you should do things. And she had the courage to tell you even when you might not want to hear it. Martha was one of those, and you don't hear this expression used so much anymore as people move and change and diversify, but Martha was one of those who could be described as a cradle Lutheran. She was born and raised with a good Lutheran name, a good German Lutheran name, Gross She was baptized and confirmed at Redeemer Lutheran Church in Bristol. And Redeemer Church could never decide whether they wanted to be in Tennessee or Virginia. So they would move to both states as they needed. Martha pretty much stayed in Lutheran circles all her life. There was a brief two-year stint at a Presbyterian junior college, which she enjoyed very much, but quickly she rectified that by graduating from our Lutheran school in North Carolina, Lenore Rhine, with plans of working in Christian education in the Lutheran church. Martha married a good Lutheran boy from Claremont. I can tell you, you can't get much more Lutheran than Claremont, North Carolina. 
She worked in Christian education in two established Lutheran parishes here in the heart of Lutheran country in North Carolina, including this congregation. And she was an active member of each Lutheran church she and Gary and her children Justin and Sarah joined. And it's been confirmed in meeting folks this week that basically everyone else in the family followed suit. This is a strong Lutheran group of folks. Even the guy from Pittsburgh who, who spoke earlier managed to become a Lutheran. What I didn't know about Martha are all the other things that made her really interesting. She loved photography and she loved camping and believe it or not she loved office supplies. I have preached funeral sermons for 36 years. I have never used this phrase in a funeral homily. She loved office supplies, but Martha did. All the supplies at her desk were color-coded and labeled and individually separated. She even collected pens for heaven's sakes. And her sister Kathy told me that the annual back to school shopping spree in downtown Bristol each year was just a notch below Christmas and Thanksgiving as an annual holiday. She was a gifted athlete. I didn't know that. She enjoyed playing ping pong and was very good at it. She loved to shoot basketball with the neighborhood boys. She enjoyed playing baseball and wanted very much to go out for Little League, but that was something you just didn't do in Bristol if you were a girl in the early 1960s. And it was her brother Mike who informed me that she was the first girl to make the finals of the annual Bristol Marble Tournament. That was a big deal in Bristol. And apparently because she was a lefty, Martha could keep her knuckles down low and was a force to be reckoned with. Martha was such an interesting person, but I can tell you that nothing captured her interest as much as her family. She had loving parents, devoted siblings and their families, a husband who loved her, helped her, and cared for her right to the end. Two wonderful and caring children and their spouses and a grandchild whom she loved very much and was very proud of. It is fitting that this afternoon service is here in this place where Martha served as a director of Christian education more than 36 years ago and that the hymns we sing this afternoon are a mix of her Lutheran heritage and the more contemporary hymns that she loved to play on her guitar and loved to share with others at VDC weekends. We commend this good, outspoken, interesting Christian lady to God's good care knowing that she is safe in the loving arms of her Savior and knowing that we will see her again. And to that we can all say, thanks be to God. Amen. Let us stand.
God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please kneel or be seated for the prayers of the church. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together in one communion, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Hear us, Lord. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and that through the grave and gate of death we may pass with him to our joyful resurrection. Hear us, Lord. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith, that your Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. Hear us, Lord. Grant to your faithful people pardon and peace that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Hear us, Lord. Grant to all who mourn a sure confidence in your loving care, that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Hear us, Lord. Give courage and faith to those who are bereaved, that they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a holy and certain hope and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. Hear us, Lord. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. Hear us, Lord. Grant us grace to entrust Martha to your never-failing love, which sustained her in this life, Receive her into the arms of your mercy and remember her according to the favor you bear for your people. Hear us, Lord. God, the generations rise and pass away before you. You are the strength of those who labor. You are the rest of the blessed dead. We rejoice in the company of your saints. We remember now all who have lived in faith, all who have peacefully died, and especially those most dear to us who rest in you. 
Give us in time our portion with those who have trusted in you and have striven to do your holy will. To your name, with the church on earth and the church in heaven, we ascribe all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us stand together. Thank you, Bob. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Martha. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ, amen. Our recessional hymn for this afternoon's service is hymn number 504. A mighty fortress is our God. <laughs> 